a binder clip, a Ziploc bag, duct tape? No, this isn't an episode of MacGyver, just my 22 favorite travel hacks for 2022. Hey y'all and welcome. If this is your first time here, I'm Christy the Gen X Gypsy and today we are talking all about travel hacks that I am really hoping we all get an opportunity to use this year. Now I've divided these hacks into a couple of different sections, so let's get started. And our first section is all about travel planning. Now with the ongoing shortage of rental cars, you will still want to book your rental car well in advance of your trip. The hack here is that one to two weeks out from leaving for your trip to go back and check the rates on those rental cars. If the rate has gone down for your rental car, you can go ahead and book at the new rate and cancel your original reservation. Now, if you paid in advance for your rental car reservation, then this hack doesn't quite work for you, but you might be able to negotiate with the rental car company to get that lower rate if the rates are with the same company, but it will take a little bit more work. The next hack is to research your destination in a different kind of way. Go ahead and look at items like everyday items, like a cup of coffee or a sandwich at the deli, and you definitely want to check out current taxi rates so that you can get a better idea of what you need to budget for your trip. It'll also give you the knowledge so you'll know if you're getting ripped off when you're there. The next hack is one of my all time favorite hacks, and that is when you're traveling with a partner or a family member or a friend, whoever you choose to travel with, to book both the window seat and the aisle seat and hope that the plane is not overbooked or overcrowded so that you end up with that middle seat free and you get to spread out during your flight. Now, if that middle seat does get booked, usually that person is more than happy to trade out for an aisle or a window seat so that you can still sit together with the person you're traveling with. A bonus tip here is that studies have been shown that the window seat is the seat where you will get the least exposure to germs on the plane. So just keep that in mind. Hack number four, Expedia just came out with a report in October of 2021 where they've done all the research on the best times to buy your plane tickets to get them at the best price. So for U.S. domestic flights, the best time to buy your ticket is between 28 and 35 days before you plan on taking that trip. Now for international flights, the sweet spot is between three to four months in advance, and those will give you the least expensive tickets for your trip. Moving on to the next section, which is all about packing. Hack number five is to make sure to use the space in your shoes for packing. I like to shove my socks and my underwear in my shoes to save room in my other compression bags when I'm packing. Now, if packing your underwear and your shoes sketches you out, just throw them in a Ziploc bag and put them in there. They will be totally fine. Hack number six is to always, always pack a headlamp with you no matter where you are going. You don't want to be dependent on the flashlight on your phone in order to help you out if you get caught in a situation where you need light, like a power outage, or maybe on a bus ride that's really dark, or maybe you just want to read a book on a train. It's just a great idea to have that headlamp with you for safety precaution. And while we're talking about safety, the next hack is to take a first aid kit with you. It doesn't have to be anything super elaborate, just some band-aids, ibuprofen, some Dramamine, diarrhea medicine, you know, the basics, so that you don't have to go looking for a pharmacy and possibly a pharmacy in a foreign language uh, when you get there if something happened to you. When I went to Guatemala, I didn't realize how curvy the roads were going to be, and I got right off the plane into a van and I immediately got car sick. I wish I had had Dramamine with me. Unfortunately, I had to go looking for a pharmacy the next day and it was all in Spanish. It was definitely quite an experience. And getting back to the binder clip from the intro of this video, you can use this binder clip to cover your razor so that when you stick your hand into your toiletry bag, you don't end up cutting yourself or nicking yourself trying to grab something else out. Now this next hack is a new one to me that I have started using and I love it. 
it is to grab one of those car deodorizers from the dollar store so that you can put it in your laundry bag when you're getting ready to pack up and come home from your trip or vacation. It just keeps everything in your suitcase from, you know, smelling like dirty clothes. Now, a lot of other people will talk about throwing a dryer sheet into your suitcase to do the same thing, which is fine and you can do that. Personally, I'm allergic to dryer sheets. I know they have the free and clear ones, but I don't know, I just don't like them and I don't really like the way they smell. But it is another option if you wanna do it that way. This last packing hack is all about the duct tape. And that is to take a piece of duct tape and put it on the inside of your suitcase and then write your contact information on it. That way, if for whatever reason, the tag on your suitcase gets ripped off and your suitcase gets picked up by somebody inadvertently or it gets lost, they can open up the suitcase and see your contact information on the inside of your suitcase and you're not just depending on that luggage tag for people to be able to find you. Our third section is all about the travel hacks you can do on your phone. And these are whether you have an Android phone or an iPhone. The first phone hack is to take pictures of all of your pertinent documentation, your passport, your ID, your insurance card, your visas, whatever you may need to access if you happen to lose that particular item. Now you'll wanna take pictures and save them on your phone, but you also want to email them to yourself just on the worst case scenario, your phone gets stolen or broken and you can't access them on your phone, you'd be able to retrieve them from your email. And if you wanna get the extra step, you can email all of that information to your emergency contact. Our next phone hack is to take a picture of where you parked. When you leave for a trip for three, seven, 10 days, sometimes it's a little hard to remember where you parked your car in the airport. So make sure you take a picture of like the number, the letter on the pole and you know what floor that you are parked on so that when you get back, you don't even have to question it. I have a white SUV. Do you know how many white SUVs are out there? Yeah, it's it can be a challenge and you know, the whole menopause brain thing. It gets, it gets to be a little challenging. Now this is a hack that's not only useful for the airport, but it's also useful for those places that you may go that have ginormous parking lots that you can get lost in. And I'm looking at you, Disney. Our third phone hack is to make sure that you have all of your destination accommodation information. Let's say that fast your destination accommodation information written down somewhere on your phone that you can access if you don't have Wi-Fi or cell service. On the iPhone, I know you can use the Notes app to do that. I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure Android has something very similar. You'll want that information because you may need it to fill out your incoming paperwork on an airplane. You'll probably need it if you're going through customs. And of course, it's always good to have if you need to give it to the people who are providing your transportation to get you to wherever you are staying. And you'll want to take a picture of your baggage claim ticket. Now in the domestic United States, it's not so important that you actually have your ticket to show somebody when you are getting your baggage off of baggage claim, unless of course you're traveling with some large sporting equipment like a surfboard or golf clubs. However, when you travel abroad, a lot of places want to check your baggage claim ticket next to your baggage to make sure you're not walking out with somebody else's baggage. I learned this the hard way when I got to Peru and I couldn't find my baggage claim ticket. I had not expected that they were gonna check for it, so I, I was caught unawares. I finally found it, luckily, in some random pocket. But learn from me and go ahead and take a picture of the baggage claim ticket so that you have it on your phone because our phones are always attached to us. Plus, it's just a good idea to have it in case they do lose your luggage. And our last phone hack is whether you are traveling abroad or you're doing a long road trip in the US, you can download Google Maps to use offline. This is super convenient if you know that you're gonna be going somewhere with limited or even non-existent cell phone service. And this is good whether you are walking around Paris or traveling through South Dakota trying to find the Black Hills. And our last section is all about hacks that you can use for your carry-on or personal item when traveling on an airplane. 
The first one is a newer one to me that I did use on my most recent trip, and that is to grab one of these cute little pencil cases from the dollar store to store all of your masks in. Now, unfortunately, it does not appear that wearing a mask on a plane or in the airport is going to go away anytime soon. And I have found that the disposable uh, blue masks tend to work a little bit better. They're lighter weight and they are a little more breathable when you're on the plane. So I like to just carry a handful of them, put them into the pencil case, and then I have them readily available while I am traveling. And it's easy to find in my carry-on suitcase. Next, we're using that binder clip again, and this time we're using it to store our wired headphones. And there are a couple of reasons that you want to bring a pair of wired headphones with you on the plane. One is that many of the airlines are still using the entertainment system that's in the back of the seat in front of you. And you are gonna want wired headphones in order to take advantage of being able to watch those movies or whatever entertainment you want to get from that system. And you definitely don't want to use the airline's headphones for that. The second is that, you know, the batteries can die on your Bluetooth headphones or, you know, those little buds, they're really easy to lose. So it's just nice to have a second set of headphones along with you on your trip. Pack an extra pillowcase with you. You never know when you're gonna get stuck in an airport with a long layover or a canceled flight and you wanna take a nap. If you have the pillowcase, you can shove some clothes in there and just make an impromptu pillow and be able to take a nap somewhere. You know, find a little hidden corner away from everybody else. You can also do the same on the airplane, shove some clothes in there and use that as your pillow for taking a nap on the airplane. And a third use for that pillowcase is you can use it as another laundry bag when you are coming home from your trip. Always, always pack at least one or two pins with you in your personal item bag. You never know when you might have to fill out a declaration form before you get off the plane and it's good to have an extra pin. Flight attendants just don't carry enough pins for everybody on the plane. Plus in this day and age, you kind of want to have your own pin. I always carry a second pin with some duct tape wrapped around it in case I have any travel emergencies that I need to use that for, like a rip in my suitcase or something of that sort. This next hack is a brand new one to me and I just learned it from Megan over at Portable Professional. She has an awesome channel. I will link it below, you can go check her out. And that is to use a gallon size Ziploc baggie to put into the seat back uh, pocket that is in front of you when you are flying. And then you can put your items into the Ziploc bag in that pocket so that, you know, it's not touching all the other things in the pocket and getting those germs. But also, that way, when your flight is over, you can just pull the Ziploc bag out and you know you won't have left anything behind. Now, I do love these silicone Ziploc bags that I've gotten recently, and I just love using these things. But of course, you can always pick up a box of gallon-sized Ziploc bags at the dollar store if you'd prefer to use that. You can also then use them on your trip to put in your wet bathing suit or you know, anything else you need to store in a Ziploc bag. Now this next hack might be a little controversial and it is to ditch your crossbody bag and your purse and travel with a fanny pack. Now you're not wearing this fanny pack typically as a fanny pack. It's more going to go across your chest and you can uh, store everything in and it's kept up front with you. I just find that it's a lot more secure and you don't have to worry about being pickpocketed or someone trying to rip your purse off of you while you are walking down the street. And yes, fanny packs are back in style, so you don't have to worry about not being stylish. Another bonus about using a fanny pack is that some of the budget airlines like Spirit, Frontier, and Allegiance, you know, they will only allow you that one personal item. And that is a considered, a purse is considered a personal item. So if you have both a personal item and a purse, they are generally going to make you shove your purse into that personal item. If you're wearing a fanny pack, you can kind of move that around behind, you know, your jacket or something and a lot of times they won't see it and they won't make you shove that into your personal item. Just a little sneaky sneaky hit there that you might be able to use. Kudos to all of you guys who are out there just packing in a personal item to go somewhere. I am just not quite at that level yet. Maybe one day. 
Now, if you're anything like me, you might get a sore back when you are on those planes for a long time. So something you can do to alleviate that pain is to roll up a jacket and stick it behind your back or a scarf or a small blanket. And you can put that back there around your lumbar area and it will help alleviate that pain. I always travel with this little uh, Thermalite blanket and it's just the right size that I can put it behind my back and it does it really helps to keep my legs from getting cramped and my back doesn't hurt quite as bad when I get to my destination. If you want to see the other things that I always pack in my carry-on suitcase, check out this video next. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.